Hello, Theo. Happy birthday. What I wanted to do for you for your birthday was I sent you a book. It's the magic school bus inside the human body. And then I thought I'd read it for you. So if you can get your book out, then we'll read it together. Okay, do you have your book? Let's open it up. Right there on the front page, there's a little girl and she's looking into a boy's mouth and asking him to stick his tongue out. Can you stick your tongue out? How far can it go? That's pretty far. Okay, let's turn the page. Oh, now, what is that a picture of? That looks like a lizard and he's looking at a skull and a plant. Do you know that the skull is part of your head? Okay, so let's start reading. You should be on the page that looks like this. It all began when Ms. Frizzle showed our class a film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start because we knew Ms. Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. We're going to learn about ourselves. This should interest everyone. I can't take the pressure, he says. A film strip is only beginning, you know. Yeah, I bet she has books that she wants us to read. When's recess? But here is the movie and it's getting started. Let's turn the page. The very next day, the Fritz made us do an experiment on our own bodies. See your own cells. They were scraping their cells and putting them on slides to look at with their microscope. That's just like at my house, right? That's cool. Then she announced that we were going on a class trip to a science museum. We were going to see an exhibit about how our bodies get energy from the foods that we eat. Miss Fritz says, your cells need energy to help you grow more. Talk, move, think, and play. Just being in Miss Frizzle's class takes all my energy. The kids don't seem very excited about this. Turn the page. The trip started out like any other trip. We rode to the museum and the old school bus, and along the way, we stopped at a park for lunch. That sounds fun. This boy says, leftover fish sticks. Ugh. I'll trade you these terrific fish sticks for that horrible peanut butter and banana sandwich. Forget it. Please, I'm eating. When it was time to go, everyone got back on the bus. Everyone but Arnold. He's the one with the fish sticks. He was still at the picnic table, daydreaming and eating a bag of cheesy wheezies. When you eat, your body digests the food so your cells can use it to make energy. That's Miss Frizzle. He's not paying attention, this little boy. His name is Arnold. Let's turn the page. Hurry up, Arnold, called Ms. Frizzle. She reached for the ignition key, but instead she pushed a strange little button nearby. Arnold's really out to lunch, one of the kids said. At once, as soon as Miss Frizzle pushed that button, the bus started shrinking and spinning through the air. From inside, we couldn't see what was happening, but all we knew that we landed suddenly. <gasps> Gulp! Arnold says, where's the school bus? And then we were going down a dark tunnel. We had no idea where we were, but as usual, Miss Frizzle knew. She said we were inside a human body going down the esophagus. That's the tube that leads from the mouth to the stomach. Most of us were too upset about leaving Arnold behind to pay any attention. Where's Arnold? Oh no, he got left. What happens when you eat junk food? You stare off into space and get forgotten. I thought we were going to the museum. There's been a slight change of plans, Ms. Frizzle said. We're being digested instead. That sounds scary. Let's turn the page. We are now passing through into the stomach, said Ms. Frizzle. It wasn't exactly quiet in there. The walls of the stomach moved in and out, churning and mashing the food into a thick liquid. 
The bus was turning round and round and digestive juice was splashing all over the windows. Now he knew how it felt to be a hamburger. Roll up your windows, children. Ms. Frizzle drove to the bottom of the stomach. We'll drive through the opening to the small intestine, she said. In the small intestine, food is broken down into molecules, tiny enough for the body to use. I want to go home, one of the kids said, but this is educational. Does education have to be this messy? Uh-oh, Arnold's back. He's not on the bus, and he says, oh, I don't feel so good. Maybe it's something I ate. We know, don't we? He ate the school bus. Let's turn the page. The small intestine was a coiled up hollow tube. The inner walls of the tube were covered with tiny fingers called villi. In the villi are tiny blood vessels. Food molecules are taken into those blood vessels, said Ms. Frizzle. Once the food is in the blood, it can travel all over the body. We felt ourselves getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and Ms. Frizzle started driving into one of the villi. She was going straight into a blood vessel. Class, the bus is following the path of the food molecules into the blood. They're going into the blood. You mean this body thinks we're food? That's better than being waste, another student said. Oh, this is so gross. I wish Arnold was here to see this, said one of the other children. Now we were in the blood. See all these? These are red blood cells. The bus is in the red blood cells. But the blood didn't look very red. Blood is not just red liquid, explained Mrs. Frizzle. Blood is made of cells floating in a clear fluid. Those look like red rubber saucers, somebody called out. Those are the red blood cells, said Ms. Frizzle. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to all the cells of the body. Here and there, there were white blood cells and they were busy destroying disease germs. White blood cells are like soldiers protecting your body from enemies, said Ms. Frizzle. They're looking in here. <gasps> Look, the white blood cell ate that germ. That's disgusting, the kid said. Did you see that? They're starting to pay attention now. Let's turn the page. Looking back, we saw a white blood cell that was chasing the bus. It's back here at the end. Well, we'll be safer than the red blood cells, kids, said Ms. Frizzle. She reached for the handle that controlled the bus's doors. Don't do it, we cried. But when did Ms. Frizzle ever listen to us? The doors of the bus flew open. We were swept out of the bus and into the bloodstream. Everybody hit your ride, called the Fritz. Each kid grabbed a red blood cell. That looks like fun, doesn't it? They were racing by. Our last glimpse of the bus was when it went into another blood vessel with a white cell right behind it. Why can't we just have spelling tests like all the other kids? <laughs> Kodak's listening too. The next thing we knew, we had flowed into the heart. Inside the heart are four hollow spaces called chambers, said Ms. F. Each chamber is a little pump. The two chambers on the right side of the heart took in used blood from the body and pump it to the lungs. In the lungs, the red cells pick up fresh oxygen. They're in the blood cells and now they're in the heart and they're going round and round the heart. We get new oxygen from the air every time we breathe in. We get rid of the waste gas and that's called carbon dioxide each time we breathe out. Oh, over here, there's a picture of Arnold again. Arnold says, oh, my heart is pounding. Take a deep breath, you'll be okay, says the little red bird. Does Arnold know that there's a school bus and all the kids inside? Let's turn the page. From the lungs, our red blood cells carried us back to the heart. This time we were on the left side of the heart, the side that pumps fresh blood back to the body again. Kids, it looks as if these red blood cells 
are on their way to the brain, said Ms. Frizzle. The brain, that's cool. Oh, there's the little boy, Arnold. He says, which way does it go? Which way do I go to get back to school? And the little red bird says, use your brain. Let's turn the page. When we reach the brain, we let go of our red blood cells. Remember, they were flying through on the red blood cells. They squeezed out of the blood vessel. It was hard to believe that this wrinkled gray blob was the control center of the body, the brain. Ms. Frizzle said the brain is made of billions of busy nerve cells. They are constantly sending and receiving messages from the eyes, the ears, muscles, and all the other parts of the body. Here's all the kids and they're all in the brain. And one of the boys says, do you think we'll be smarter after this? Somebody else says, I sure hope so. Somebody else says, where's the bus? How will we get home? Here's Mrs. F. She says, children, we are walking on the cerebral cortex, the pinkish gray outer layer of the brain. Without it, we couldn't see, hear, smell, touch, taste, talk, move, or think. Arnold is over here in the corner again. And Arnold says, let's see, Ms. Frizzle was driving that way to the museum, so our school must be that way. And the red bird says, good thinking. Let's turn the page. We left the head by climbing down the bones of the spine. Inside the bones was the spinal cord, a thick bundle of nerve cells stretching from the brain. Smaller bunches of nerve cells branched out from each side of the spinal cord. These were carrying nerve messages all over the body. So this is the spinal cord, it's yellow. And then these are nerves and they stretch out to the whole rest of the body and they feel the rest of the body. We followed some nerves that went to the leg muscles. So now they're over here on this side. We followed some nerves that went to the leg muscles. The leg muscles were working very hard in this body. They needed a lot of energy. They used up a lot of food and oxygen from the blood. The heart was beating faster to carry fresh blood to the muscle cells. Here's Miss F. She says, children, we are sliding on a muscle from here will return to the bloodstream. One of the children says, I wonder where Arnold is now. I have a strange feeling he's nearby. And here's a picture again of Arnold. Arnold says, I'll get sooner there if I run. <laughs> and he's panting and breathing hard. And the little red bird says, the more active you are, the faster your heart beats. Let's turn the page. Oh, it looks like they found their school bus. We entered a nearby blood vessel. The blood was moving so fast, we were afraid we would lose each other. But at that moment, the school bus floated by. Oh, what a relief. We jumped on and went up through the heart and lungs again, just the way that we went before. There's Ms. F, she's on the bus. Class, we're on the way out of the body. Oh, relax, we're going back home now. I can't relax as long as I see blood cells outside the window. Okay, we're back up on this page now. When we emerged from the bloodstream, we were in a huge open space. Where are we? Asked a kid. Ms. Frizzle explained. Children, this is the nasal cavity. The what? The inside of the nose, said Ms. Fritz. Suddenly, we heard a deafening noise. It sounded like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The children said, we're in the nose. I'm so grossed out. Here's Arnold over on the side. I think I'm going to sneeze. The red bird says, use your hanky. Turn the page. Then after, ah, 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 choo, we all heard him sneeze. A tremendous blast of air hit the bus full force. We flew forward, spinning around and around. 
Ms. Fritz says, children, prepare for landing. Please remain seated until the bus comes to a complete stop. Arnold is over here and he just had a huge sneeze. Achoo! The red bird says, gesundheit. Turn the page. We were going so fast we couldn't see anything, but we could tell that we were getting bigger and bigger. Then thud, we landed. There we were back at school and there was Arnold. He was in the school parking lot blowing his nose. Arnold, we said, the trip was amazing. You should have been there. And Arnold is saying, where were you guys? And they all missed him so much. Turn the page. Back in the classroom, it was business as usual. Ms. Frizzle made us draw a chart of the human body for the bulletin board. Can we slip these kidneys in behind the intestines? Here's the gallbladder, here's the heart, here's the stomach. Are we almost done? And look, they drew it. It was huge. It's a great big picture of the human body, right? Isn't that exciting, Kodak? Kodak's very excited about it. At last, everything was quiet in Ms. Frizzle's class. Everything except, of course, her dress. Her dress was pretty loud, I guess. She must buy her clothes in outer space, one of the children said. Don't give her any ideas, another boy said. And that's the end. It ends with Ms. F putting a skeleton back in the closet. I hope you had a good birthday. I love you, Theo. <coughs> Kodak says happy birthday to you.